Okay, let's let's start. So, so today I will present multiple questions. Most of them will appear in the midterm. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, they will put they will put the for example, uh the the question one is from homework one. What's the base two number representation of uh, this base two number? So I probably will change another number in the in the midterm. So that's the that's the form. Yes. So the um, so the conversion between a base two uh, from a base two number to a I'm sorry from a base ten number to a base two number. I uh, remember uh, for each step. And then the remainder of the first uh, uh, are the least significant features. So So the question two is, uh, what's the largest address of a uh, 64? So you can use all 64. And then it's about 1.8. Uh, multiply. But if you have the first part, and uh, for the third group, Question three is about uh, the big idea and the little idea. The difference between big idea and the little idea is how to store the least, uh, the least of the data. 
for example, one more right for right. Mobile. So the representation. Well, totally, you have eight digits there. And the smallest graph is this one. in the big island. The So that's the So how to prove those Boolean algebra? Draw a truth table. When you present a truth table there, um, there will be no question. You just list uh, all the possible combinations for the X and the Y. And uh, other Boolean algebra. And of course, you can set some intermediate. For us, for us, for us, for uh, there are several questions, and uh, this question is uh, more difficult. So, how to um, draw the CMOS transistor based on a Boolean algebra? How to convert the Boolean algebra uh, to a uh, to a transistor gates, a set of transistor gates? So the the transistors have the cool down matrix and the drop down. In the pull down network, we have the NMOS, which you have no circle on the on the gate, but in the drop network, you have the PMOS. The PMOS are always connected with the PDD. But uh, most are connected to the Yes. Um, how long is it that so far if we tire to see the Is that the thing to check that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, um, for the pull down network, the most mm -hmm. When you add a bar to the app, then you can remove the, the large bar. Yes. No, just the, these, uh, these examples. I mean, you can Google this question online. I think you can. You, you may find a, a many examples. So for the Puda, for the Puda, for the Puda, you can see all these. 
uh, connected the parallel. Okay. So after we apply For the PMOS, you need to apply the Yes. So in this situation, so I have a Yes, that's right. That's right. And the P, you, you know that P mode has a circle. Yes. You're talking about the two arm network or two down network? So this, you're talking about yeah. this question, right? That was the question data from the that, that explanation, but that is actually the number of Yes, yes, you are right. So there's no relationship between the, you know, there's no relationship between this question and the first question. So you just, you know, do compute them independently. So for the pull down network, for this network, apply a prop on the app. So after you apply a inversion on this part, you can see can implement But for the pull up network, you don't need to apply the inversion first. You just apply the inversion law. And then you can implement the network.
again for the for the question in the homework. Um, in order to implement this then you have A and And then the end of the whole thing. So this is how you do the and then you implement this So after the development law and the job becomes all. We have an M here after the moment of a class, A off. So A off, we connect to the token in part. Any question? So you just need to remember in the pull down network, you apply a inversion first. Um, in the pull up network, you apply the local law. So this question is to ask you to compute the uh, power consumption. Since this question provided you two voltage configuration and the two frequency configuration, so you can compute a different power value for different configuration. One point that you need to notice that I think this question is uh, standard unit to get the uh, watt value. For example, it's a uh, one gigahertz. It's a true model. So every single value needed to be converted to uh, the standard unit, and then you can do the calculation. Any question? Yes. You can write. You can you can bring your pa a paper. So in the examination, you cannot use your mobile phone, right? Yeah. But uh, you can use anything except the mobile phone and uh, uh, the laptop. 
So no laptop, no mobile phone. So no internet. You can you can even print these questions out and bring these questions with you if you like. And uh, when you have a difficulty in the unit conversion, for example, nano F, if you don't know whether it's a 10 to minus nine or 10 to minus six, you can ask me during the examination, of course. So this is the question in our class. Again, uh, you can take the power value, you need to convert everything to the uh, standard unit. Because this is a value. The static power is a very small. Uh, all the power, uh, most of the power. And then the the uh, these uh, uh, the following instructions are about how to compute the yield. So the vapor diameter is ten. The heat area is also in cm square. So how many chips can you fabricate on a vapor? So the first part here is chip area of the vapor. And then you can use the area of the vapor divided by the single chip area. And then you can get to the number. So assume there are D and D and the yield of wafer is uh, this value. Again, you can use the last of And then eventually, after you have the value of uh, size for the liquid and the size you also And this is the last part of the, that question. And then we have the K, uh, I'm sorry, the K map. And then we have the K map here. How do you simplify by K map?
So in order to simplify this equation, this is four variable equation, A, B, C, D. You need to write A and B here. And then you need to all the Similar to the truth table, but in different format. One thing you need to know is that after the one plus one plus zero, we want to guarantee that for each neighboring, for two neighboring row or columns, only one D is the free. So, D one one uh, from one zero to one one only. So if you write a one zero here, then two D, two D's are here. That's not right. These are all the combination of the possible value of uh, A, B, C, D here. Each one so how to make this uh, how to make this pulling algebra equals to one. For example, we have a D bar. So each term one box. You can write a one into one box, and each one corresponding to one term. After that, you can use circle to cover all the ones. The circle in the, the side. And the circle needed to as large as to be as large as possible. And the last circle can cover the most uh, the the last, uh, the first one. So after you draw the circle, you can write any question. So at least all the rules here, you can read these rules and then see the question, the answer of the question. So these are the cases for three variables. This question is about the difference between full adder and half adder. Uh, full adder includes a carry in so there are three instances but the half adder has no carry in so only a and b two in you have to kill a multiple b but you cannot do that by 
ายต้องมีภาพมิสปันเออ a lot of time a lot of time in this you know number representations t o o complements sign the number and unsign the number so this table indicates uh, two complements a uh, four bit two complements sign number and unsign number at least uh, all of them in a table here So uh, you need to understand how to convert a sign number to its t o o t h complement format. So if a number is a positive number, then the sign binary and the t o o t h complement format are the same. So if a sign number is a matching number, um, then you need to do the inversion and then add a one. So for matching a, you write a here and binary form. So here are some example how to convert a negative sign number to its t o o t h complement. For the positive sign number, uh, the t o o t h complement format is the same as this number itself. So here is uh, some example. Ask you to how to, uh, to convert a number to its t o o t h complement format. Before the conversion, you need to understand whether this number is sign number or not. Only sign number uh, has its t o o t o o t h complement. When you know it's a sign number, the first thing that you do and it's a matter of a positive number or negative number. If it's a positive number, then you just directly write uh, this number as it's a t o o t h complement for format. If it's a negative number, you do the inversion and add one. Again, still the t o o t h complement format. So how to convert a negative sign number to its uh, t o o t h complement format? This is also the t o o t h complement format. So with the square, with the t o o t h complement format, you can use an adder to compute the subtraction. So you can support both addition and subtraction. The next step is to detect the overflow. When you add two very large Do a subtraction between very small numbers. It's possible for you to have overflow. 
no problem. You add a two large, uh, two, two large positive number, the result can be a negative number. At that time, you know, okay, you, the, the sign is actually wrong. So the detection of the workflow is very simple. Um, you just do an actual operation. For the most, the time If they are different, then you have a uh, overflow. After the you know, two function operation, I will like to do the addition or subtraction, and then ask you whether this addition has overflow or not. So these are some examples. Question. And then the floating point. I think we have a low requirement of this part. If you can understand each part here, on the overflow, I'm sorry, on the floating point numbers. So the there are three major components in the floating point number. The first one is the sign. We will focus on the normalized encoding example. So if you can do this example, then this So how to convert this floating point to that way? The first step is to convert it to binary form. So the arm Because this is a 32 bit floating point, single um, procession floating point. Totally, it's a 32 bit. And the fraction occupy 30, I'm sorry, 23 bits. And the EXP occupy eight bits. When you write the E here, so we need to add five. So the EXP is about five. Because it's a positive number, it's fine. And then you can write them together. Totally, it's a circular bit. 
So after you understand the rules, how to convert, uh, find the number to choose complement, how to uh, convert a floating point number to a standard for a representation. I don't think you have a, a difficulties to do that, but you need to be careful um, about a number of bits for each component. I think that's a question. So if no question, uh, we can stop today and I will post these slides on Canvas. Please review these slides and review the slides of our previous lectures. If you have any question, we can talk on next Monday. Yes. This one. Yeah, in the fraction, why do you have like 10 zero? That's okay. You have the, the fraction uh, has a so if you, you only have a maybe five, you need to have some pack. So next. Monday, we will have a QA. and a Please review these things. And then the next Wednesday, we will have the exam. Yes. Uh, We will have a one or two question on the speed up. But uh, again, in review those, only one slide is on the speed up, right? So review that uh, slide. It should be enough. No, 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 no assembly question. The assembly question are covered by the project one. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's not internet connected, it's just the big models that are Yes, yes. Well.